Here's more wrestling news for April 3rd, 2023. And we're starting off with Edge, who emerged victorious at WrestleMania 39 in a particularly gruesome Hell in a Cell match with Finn Balor. Given the severity of his neck injury that forced him to retire in 2011, any match from Edge these days should be considered very special, and there won't be many more left from the Hall of Famer. Speaking to SiriusXM, Edge acknowledged that this will be his final run with WWE before retiring, as the last thing he wants to do is become a hindrance to the company. He said, I don't want to be the guy who, when a young guy like Austin Theory looks at the lineup sheet, goes, I got Edge, all right, there's going to be some work. I want Austin Theory to look at it and go, whoa, okay, cool, I get to work with Edge. Just like I did when I looked at the sheet and saw him working Mr. Perfect, you know? That's the feeling I want guys to still have. That's what I want the audience to have. I don't want to go past my sell-by date. I still want to be able to be involved in Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania if I'm around with a guy like Finn Balor who's at the top of his game. I don't want to stick around until that's not the case. In a perfect world, I'd love to retire in Toronto. Do I know exactly when that is? No, I don't. There are a lot of mitigating factors to that, but this is the last run, there's no doubt about that. We've seen plenty of legends in the past lost a lot of their luster by competing past their prime, including Goldberg and The Undertaker, who put on an absolute stinker together in 2019. Edge refuses to let that happen to him, and with the Canadian turning 50 later this October, fans should enjoy every match he has before the Hall of Famer retires, this time on his own terms. For weeks running up to WrestleMania, fans speculated on what Bobby Lashley would do at the event after it was reported that he wouldn't be facing Bray Wyatt. Perhaps Lashley would be added to the Intercontinental title match or lock horns with the debuting Jay White, but what we got was neither of those options. Instead, Lashley appeared and held up his Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal trophy and did not get physical as so many had expected. On Twitter, fans blasted the segment as a complete waste of Lashley, and some pointed out that Pat McAfee and KSI had bigger roles than the two-time former WWE World Champion. Of course, Lashley cannot be blamed for why his match with Wyatt didn't happen, but WWE's use of him on the show has hardly gone down well, and what did you want to see from the Almighty in LA? In the run-up to WrestleMania Saturday, there was much debate over which match would headline the event, with the SmackDown Women's title match and the tag team titles being considered the favorites. Ultimately, WWE went with the latter in a wise call by the company, but Charlotte Flair shared her two cents before the event went live. Speaking on Out of Character, Flair said that there was a double standard with fans, as the Men's Royal Rumble winner is always expected to headline one of the nights, so why shouldn't the same be said for the Women's Royal Rumble winner? The last time a Women's Rumble winner closed out a WrestleMania, it was Bianca Belair in 2021. And do you agree that there is a double standard? Let us know in the comments. Charlotte Flair did not get to headline WrestleMania this weekend, and she also did not retain the SmackDown Women's title, but we do know what's next in her future. Fans who saw Flair compete will have noticed how she looked much leaner at the showcase of the Immortals, and on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained why. He said, Charlotte Flair is down in weight, you know. She's talked about doing a bodybuilding contest, but she's talked about doing a bodybuilding contest this summer and doing the diet and everything. I can't tell you how much weight she's lost, but it was quite noticeable. Meltzer added that wrestlers have told him that competing while training for bodybuilding is not fun, given that you have less fat to cushion the blows of bumps in the ring. Charlotte Flair has dominated the world of professional wrestling and now plans to do the same in bodybuilding, and we'll have to see how she fares in this endeavor. More from WrestleMania as Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and Gunther waged a war for the Intercontinental Championship on night two, in a match that can only be described as a banger. In the run-up to the match, the friendship of Sheamus and McIntyre had been greatly tested as both men wanted to become champion, but the pair had a bonding moment after the match. In a spot not shown on TV, McIntyre and Sheamus hugged it out to the cheers of fans as the two were able to steal the show on the grandest stage of them all. For McIntyre, it's been over two years since he last held gold in WWE, but is the Scottish Warrior on his way out the door? Fightful Select report that McIntyre's contract with WWE is set to expire within the next nine months or so, which would put his deal ending by the end of 2023. McIntyre has told those close to him that he plans to wait until much closer to the end of his deal before he looks into signing a new contract, and that there are a number of factors to consider. 
Since returning to WWE in 2017, McIntyre has been one of the big names in WWE, both as part of NXT and the main roster, but his time with the company could soon be coming to an end. With WrestleMania taking over LA, several events were held in the city including WrestleCon, but this year's event went viral on Twitter for all the wrong reasons. On Twitter, Giselle Shaw informed her followers that while at the event, she received a barrage of transphobic abuse by somebody, and when she turned around, found it to be WWE Hall of Famer Rick Steiner. Shaw, who had been signing autographs at the convention and had done nothing to provoke Steiner, was called filth and was told to get the f away from here, among transphobic comments, and the wrestling world has responded to what happened. On social media, several wrestlers called out what Steiner did, with Kip Sabian calling it disgraceful, while Chris Jericho said that Steiner has always been a bully via an Instagram comment. Ricky Morton, Andrew Everett, and Will Ospreay are some of the many wrestlers who have also expressed their support, while other wrestlers who were present at WrestleCon have corroborated Shaw's claims. Shaw had done nothing to deserve this transphobic vitriol from Steiner, and on social media, some have speculated that this may have played a role in the booking of Stand and Deliver. The NXT event last Saturday saw Rick's son Braun Breaker lose the NXT Championship to Carmelo Hayes, and while some have speculated that WWE made the call because of his father, there's no smoking gun proving that assertion. In a tweet of their own, the official WrestleCon account confirmed Shaw's claims, saying that they regret what happened to Shaw, and that the event aims to be a safe environment for all who attend. Rick Steiner has been banned from WrestleCon due to his transphobic behavior, and we can only hope that similar events don't happen to Shaw or anybody else in the wrestling community.